Alright, welcome back to the D-Guys channel. So, today we're going to start working on the Civic. I've got quite a few things I'm going to do today because the car runs great, like I said in my last video. We're going to go ahead and make it run better. We've got some V-Power plugs from NGK. Those are my preferred brand, just so you guys know. Brake best because they're cheap. I paid $1.99 for these brakes, and I will tell you how in just a second. Master Pro, just for the distributor cap and rotor. I've got uh, some stuff to clean it up. This is disgusting. This is unacceptable for me. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I went out and bought some of my favorite degreaser, Purple Power. Um, I use that on everything. I use that on cleaning and shampooing carpets in cars and everything. It is the best high strength cleaner that I've ever found that works amazing. So I'll spray that on a spray bottle while I take this to the car wash. And we'll spray everything, let it soak for a few minutes, spray it off, and I'll spray more on and let it soak. And uh, I'll go through all that whenever I go down when it comes time to doing that. We will be painting the valve cover, wife's request, gloss white, Rust-Oleum of course. It'll be clear coated, and she wants the teal color to be splattered on it so it'll be splatter painted gloss white and she's come up with the color she wants to do and this is going to be the color of the car just like my old four-door that was turboed but this will be on a 99 instead of a 95. we have brake parts cleaner obviously you can't go wrong with brake parts cleaner you can clean this valve cover up real quick and easy i use purple power but i will be doing brakes because i did get the brakes be getting an oil change super tech has the most additives you can put in an oil because Walmart doesn't want to get sued. So, SuperTech is really good oil. I will vouch for it. I put it in lots of my turboed cars. I honestly prefer Rotella T6 in most of my turboed cars. So, I use Rotella T6 in my turboed cars. But since this is not turboed, that'll work perfectly fine. It's cheap. It's like 12 bucks. You can get an oil filter for like... I, I would just get a micro uh, microguard filter from O'Reilly's or AutoZone. ISO heat with injection cleaner. It's a water remover. It's basically antifreeze for your fuel. That stuff is highly recommended. Um, it actually fixed one of the cars that recently I had over here. It had frozen fuel already and it was causing issues and then I poured it in, let the engine reach operating temperature and let it idle for a while and the heat from the engine cycled the fuel back into the tank and melted the ice and then it's it hasn't froze over since. So get yourself some heat. V12 chemical tool I swear by it. It's better than seafoam. I love seafoam, don't get me wrong, but that stuff works better. It's brake clean in liquid form. That is all the, the only way I can think of putting it. If I were to put some on a rag and put it and try to wipe this valve cover, this valve cover would look, look brand new. So I'm actually going to prove that by showing you how strong it is and showing you how it works versus the brake cleaner. But the uh, Berryman's B12 Chem Tool Put it in your fuel system and I guarantee you, you will love how your car runs. I didn't get a fuel filter for this specific reason. I'm going to run that through this tank and after this tank is completely empty, then I will replace the filter because if you unclog something and you put a new fuel filter on right now, it'll clog the new fuel filter up. So you want your unclogs to be done before you change the filter. I hope all this makes sense and I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. I am ADHD and I am full of energy right now. It is late. And I do not know why I have so much energy. Anyways, so I'll go ahead and show you how to do the difference between those two right now. There won't be any difference, I guarantee it. Um, I didn't get plug wires because these wires are in really good shape. But if the time comes, I'll replace the plugs. But this is what I do basically anytime I get a vehicle. This is my, this is my arsenal right here. Minus the spray cans. Maybe the spray cans, who knows. But uh, it's a really good really good car so there's not a whole lot I have to do to it right now but I'm just doing this as preventative maintenance because the oil is a little dirty um, the cap that's one of the first things that always goes wrong with me on a Honda I get water and moisture in it and it corrodes so I'm gonna go ahead and knock these things out I've spent less than a hundred dollars on all of this stuff and then some I bought even more than this um, so yeah let's get this tackled and get to work Okay, I'm going to show you. It's just a clean rag. Oh, it's washed. It's just it's stained. It's a clean rag. It's all cleared off. 
I'm gonna go ahead and open this. Pull a little part out here. I always put this in my fuel, like on any vehicle I have, it works so good. That's how my vehicles run so good, I think. I'll just put a little spot on right there. You can see how strong it is. It even smells like brake clean. You don't even have to put a lot of effort into it. And there's a spot from that. Now, this is what it pulled up just off that. I'm going to go to a clean spot, like right here, and spray some brake clean on there. Now, I'm going to go over here where it's dirty still. And wipe it dry or clean. There's no difference. These are the same strength of cleaners. I know that's an easy thing to clean, but um, this stuff is basically brake clean in liquid. You can pour in your tank. And if they've been in business for over 95 years, right there, it says so. Uh, works good. I recommend it highly to anybody who's having fuel issues. The injectors seem like they're clogged up and dirty. You have a loss of power. This stuff, a whole can of it, to a half a tank if you want it to be more powerful do a whole can to a half a tank that's what I do and it works I highly recommend it you can use this stuff I believe in the crank case let's see here um, I really wouldn't use it in the crank case just because um, that you can usually use this stuff in the crank case like sea foam you can pour it into your oil and it cleans inside. I don't do that just because I would rather, I'd rather not ru ruin my rod bearings or something. I just pour it in my fuel, call it good. If you need a high strength solvent that'll clean and degrease, you can get this and put it in a spray bottle and spray your engine bay. Let it soak. Or you can just get brake clean because it's the same stuff. This is $4, this is uh, $2 at Walmart. Traditionally, brake clean costs about six bucks, five, six bucks. So now that we got that out of the way, I will take this, clean it off later. I'll probably take the valve cover off before I go to the car wash, even though it kind of sounds stupid. But I just, I want to get it all done tonight. So we'll go ahead and start on the uh, wheels. I might have to wait till tomorrow because um, it's getting kind of late. But I might pull, I, I have to have the car pulled back a little bit and it's kind of cold outside. But I will try to get at least the plugs and the distributor cap and the, uh, I'll pour this in the tank and at least get that done for tonight. So let's get to work. Okay, we'll start with cylinder one. Cylinder one on a D series is closest to the timing belt as it is on most vehicles. Well, those are really loose. Let's see how much effort. Yeah, it doesn't take any effort really to loosen these, which is common in vehicles with high higher mileage because they just kind of, see how loose that is? I might, see if I can do it to this one. Nope, oh, that one's a little tighter. Yep, that's the tightest one. I want to show you a trick on how I get these out. See how it didn't come out? You can take one of your spark plug wires, push it on pulls it right up for you yeah these definitely needed to replace they don't look too bad around the electrode but there's rust right here which means it was arcing a little bit it's common and these are cheap plugs two bucks I already made sure they were pre like I pre gapped them prior to this video so just go ahead and start with number four and work our way back
but I'm not loose enough. Hmm. On this spark plug right here, there's a little piece of rubber around there making it to where this isn't actually making contact. So we'll have to get that out before I can go any farther on this spark plug. I've had this happen before and it sucks fishing the rubber out. There's all kinds of rubber. Yeah, these plugs are definitely bad. Now that we're done with that, we will go ahead and do the distributor cap while we're at it. And I can show you the firing order if you don't know the firing order for one of these. Okay, now make a note to yourself right now on the position of where each wire is. Me, I know the firing order pretty well. This is four. This is three. There's two. And then there's one. So, I know, but if you don't, you might not want to just rip all these out right away. But I will give you the firing order here in a minute so you can 
pause the video and look back at it if you're using this video to do your own work. And we ran into a stripped out Phillips. So we'll have to switch to an 8mm to undo that screw for the distributor cap. Because this one, this someone stripped that one out prior to me getting the car. So go ahead and get an 8mm on here. Okay, as you can see the inside of this distributor already has an Excel racing coil. I kind of lucked out on that. I was going to put one on. And the rotor does not look to be very old. It looks kind of new. So the inside of the cap has quite a bit of corrosion around each lead. So it's a good thing I got a cap. Um, yeah, this rotor is pretty new. Fairly new looking. I can't, I can't be certain, but it looks fairly fairly new so I don't have to replace the rotor or take it off and the coil is clearly good so it's glad I'm glad I didn't buy a coil yet uh, I have spare coils if the XL coil goes out but I'll show you the firing order this flat side right here sits like this it's four three two and one so it goes one two three four one two three four one, two, three, four. I hope this helps someone that has a firing order issue. But since I already know this, I'm just going to take all these off. Put this cap off to the side because that corrosion could be cleaned up and this cap could be reused. We're going to go ahead and put the new cap on. It comes with the new gasket. I always recommend putting them on, that way you don't get moisture in your distributor. So the gasket's right around this edge. Probably have to have a pick tool or a small flathead screwdriver. Make sure it's all the way in there. There it is. Put the new cap on. Make sure it's nice and snug, no gap. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take some brake clean and I'm going to clean these wires up because these wires are not in bad shape, they're just dirty. We'll just take some brake clean and wipe them down. Give them that like new appearance. You can do this to the whole plug wire if you want. They give your engine bay a cleaner look. That way you don't have to go out and buy new ones unless they're actually bad. If they're if they're bad or you suspect they're bad, just go ahead and replace them. But I know these ones are good, so I don't have to do that right now.
Alright, now we'll start putting all these back together where they're supposed to go. I always start with number four because it's right down at the very bottom closest to the front of the car. Then I work three, which is above four. I always keep these. It makes such a cleaner appearance. Then we'll go two, which is at the very bottom under one. One. And that gives it a pretty clean look there. And now that they're all connected, you can pull the brake clean on a rag and clean up right around where they connect. Make it look even cleaner. That's it's not necessary. You don't have to do this. This is just something I do because I'm OCD and I like clean appearance. And that's that. Now, of course, you always test fire it, make sure it runs right. Um, I, I know it'll be fine, but I'll start it up in just a minute. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the air box back on. Get all this junk out of this engine bay here. Whatever this junk is. Okay. Now this would be a good time where you could clean this air box up, but we will probably be putting an aftermarket air filter someday, so I'll just spray this off at the car wash with the super clean. And we'll just leave it be. Not a big deal. Now that we got the plugs, the wires are cleaned, caps on, rotors inspected, brand new, and the distributor, the coil is a brand new racing coil. We'll go ahead and just kind of clean this up a little bit just for appearance. Why not? I'll go ahead and uh, take the valve cover off tomorrow and finish the brakes and the oil change. Um, I will be taking the brake calipers off, painting them red. Um, yeah, I just gotta do a few little things and should be good to go. The car will get a major detailing. Uh, it will be getting a Y8 intake manifold because I don't like this carburetor looking style. It's clearly not carbureted, but. I like the Y8 style intake manifold on these. Give it a little bit more performance. Even though this is a daily and it's not supposed to be fast, you never know. A little horsepower can never hurt. But uh, yeah, so definitely stay tuned. Don't go anywhere yet because I will be editing this all in one video. So this will be a one video piece. So I will see you tomorrow, which will seem like a few seconds. So. Okay, so what we'll start today with doing is the uh, cleaning the engine bay up. I decided I'm going to go ahead and clean the engine bay before I paint the valve cover because this concoction I've made here is really strong. I use 
purple power, which is already pretty strong, and I add zero water to it. I do not dilute it in any way. And that right there is pretty strong by itself. Then I add brake clean, spray it in as a super solvent, basically is what I call it as a super solvent. It works really, really good, and you can pre-soak the bay just by spraying, but uh, what I usually do is I pre-soak the engine bay before I go to the car wash, and after I'm done pre-soaking, drive to the car wash, get to the car wash, pre-soak again, and then hit it with some high pressure rinse. I don't use the soap from the car wash. The degreaser is pretty good, but I don't know. I'll show you how good this stuff works though, because I'm going to spray it on a few areas and just wipe it down. And be careful when making this because um, it can take the paint off. I'll show you how strong it is. And that was just spraying a little bit of it. Like I could, I could go to town right now and get this whole thing clean in my garage, but I just there's too many small spots. So what I do is I spray everything besides the distributor. Um, just soak it all, and uh, try to stay away from the plug wires. And if you can, try to stay away from the connectors on the injectors. But if you're trying to get the intake manifold clean, you're gonna hit the injector clips. If water gets in it and it does cause an issue, if you can get some compressed air or you have an air compressor, just blow it out with a air and it'll be fine. Um, I've done hundreds of engine bays that I've cleaned and painted and pressure washed and the main issue would be distributor, plug wires, or injectors. Basically everything else you can hit if it does cause an issue, take each connector out, blow it out with air, and you'll be good to go. So I am going to go to the car wash, and of course you guys are going with me, and I will show you how I do it. All right, now that we're here, I'm gonna soak it again, including the underside of the hood, then we'll hit it with some pressure. See how much cleaner it is already. I sprayed all this stuff because I know how to fix it if it messes up, but it's definitely a lot cleaner. If I had a little bit more change on me, I would probably do it another time, let it soak a little bit, do some more, but that's a lot better than it was. So now we're gonna get back home and tear the valve cover off, sand it, clean it a little bit more and paint it, and then we'll do the brakes. Okay, so now we're home. I'm going to take the valve cover off, clean the little spots that are left on it, which isn't very much. As you can see how much better the engine bay looks. But we'll go ahead and take the valve cover off so we can get ready to paint it. well taken care of that's that's a good sign so what we're gonna do now I'm gonna get this valve cover all cleaned up
Okay, now that we've got it clean, what we're gonna do is wipe it down with a wax grease remover. That way we know there's nothing greasy on there left over. This is the wax grease remover I use. Now we're gonna go over it with some sandpaper and I stuff it. cover with some white and this is the primer basically for this uh, it's pretty thick it's you know covered just two times the normal cans it's thick it's it bonds really well chemically so this is the stuff that I use and I prefer it to anyone What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit it with the heat gun on low heat just to kind of speed up the drying process a little bit and then we'll be shooting splatter flatter paint rust-oleum over it and then after it's dried a little bit we'll put some clear. Technique, but I spray my finger and then I flick it on there. Now we're gonna let that dry for a little bit. I'm not gonna use the heat gun on this one. I'm just gonna let it kind of cure and then we're gonna shoot over it with many layers of clear. So we'll do that once it's dry. Alright, so now we're gonna use the 2x clear. I want to try the uh, 2k clear which is the professional auto body shops use but it's in a spray can version the hardener is activated the minute you start using it because you have to push a button on the bottom so I will be testing that here shortly um, it's the same stuff they use in a gun just in a more convenient small can that way you don't have to whip out the compressor and everything else and it holds up to all the chemicals like gas and acetone and it can be wet sanded and buffed just like a normal clear coat on the factory car. So we're going to go ahead and put some layers on. I'm going to, the layers dry fairly quick and I'm going to kind of make them a little bit light so I can add more layers. And then uh, I'll hit them lightly with a little tiny bit of heat on the heat gun. Um, we'll see what we get. Alright, that coat's dried up pretty good. Um, I let it dry for about 10 minutes. Now I'm going to hit it with another coat. Okay, we're going to put another coat on. It's been 10 minutes. Still looks really, really wet, which is the look we're going for. And after it's all said and done, we can actually wet sand and buff it out. I probably won't just because this is going to be the wife's daily car. So, it's really not a big issue for me or anything. Put the new valve cover gasket and gasket seal, and the valve cover and engine will be done for now, besides the oil change, which I'm going to actually start doing now. That way I don't have to put fresh oil on wet paint, you know, if I accidentally spill it or something. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that now. Okay, one of the things to make a note of is to pour oil in here prior to putting it on the car if you didn't already know this and pay, take a dab of the oil and wrap it like smear it around the seal right here that will ensure that it won't get stuck to the car a lot of people don't do this and a really important note is to do it because of the fact that you don't want a dry start 
You don't want no oil in there when it starts up. It's very bad on the rod bearings and dry starts are one of the main failures or causes of a failure on most engines is because if it's cold and the oil's too thick, it's a dry start. Lucas um, motor oil, the oil additive stabilizer, that stuff prevents dry starts. So I highly recommend that. I don't have any right now, but I will be going to get some later because I totally spaced it out. But go ahead and do that first just so you don't forget it and uh, I'm gonna get underneath drain the oil and I always run just a little bit of oil through while it's draining to kind of kind of flush it out um, I'll show you what I mean so I'm gonna get down there start draining filter that was on here was pretty stuck on there but I got it off um, always double check to make sure that the leftover seal isn't left on the car because if you do that and you put the oil filter on it'll just spray oil everywhere the moment you start it so as it's draining I like to go ahead and pour a little oil down here because it'll kind of flush it down towards the bottom Any oil will do. I just got some 30 weight. It'll flush it out so it's no big deal. Just kind of pushes it down. Pushes the bad stuff out. And once it's done draining at the bottom, we'll plug it up. Put the new oil filter on. Okay, now the oil filter's going on, so after the oil filter's on, I'll put oil in, and uh, we'll check underneath to make sure it's not leaking, and then we'll go from there. it's topped off and then we'll put the valve cover on and get to work on the brakes and be done for the day it's right where it should be it's just a hair over the line which once it starts it'll suck the rest back into the oil filter and it'll be right where it needs to be perfectly level so we'll go ahead and uh get the valve cover put back on carefully and uh, get working on them brakes Alright, well under the hood is done now as you can see. Valve cover looks pretty awesome. Wife loves it. She came out and checked it out while I was getting all the bolts for the valve cover done. It looks beautiful now. Uh, it's only been a day or two. I don't even remember. I've slept since then. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good. Um, yeah. Uh, also, I did check 
the air filter because some of you are probably thinking what about the air filter and it's not bad I mean this side is dirty but the side that's important isn't that bad so this will be good enough until I get the Y8 intake manifold installed and then we'll obviously be changing that so there's that everyone so now we're gonna get started on the brakes and after the brakes are done I'll be done for today um, got a lot of other stuff on my plate that I gotta do so it does look a lot better already though so we'll get started on the brakes and then uh, we'll finish on the brakes okay this is why I need to do the brakes It's only slightly annoying. The rotor doesn't look bad, but the brakes definitely need replaced. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the brake caliper off all the way. Um, actually, I'm not gonna take it off all the way. I was gonna take it off all the way and paint it red just because I like red brakes, but I'll do that at a later time. So what I will do is undo the 12 millimeter at the bottom, pull this up, I'll have to reset the uh, caliper, but that's easy stuff, so we'll get to it. And that's the condition. That is horrible. Yeah, don't ever let your brakes go this long. And that one's pretty bad, too. See the difference? Thickness. And well, this actually has something on it. We might have an issue with the uh, brake caliper because there's fluid on the ground there's not supposed to be so I will go ahead and uh, take a look at that and um, if everything's good I'll just put the bolt back in the bottom end and start on the other side if not we gotta get a new caliper okay everything's good I don't know why there's fluid on the ground must have been some seal or something but uh, I went and pumped the brakes and it's doing perfectly fine Sounds normal now. So we'll go ahead and start on the other side. Yep, side's pretty bad too. That would explain the squeal. It stopped fine, but that doesn't always mean that it will. Eventually, someday it'll give out. Now remember, you don't have to bleed the brakes when you do it this way, but if you feel more comfortable bleeding them, then by all means do so. But when I backed the car up to move it so I could get to this side, it stopped perfectly fine. And it's not leaking on that side. That was just from whenever I press the uh, piston. So we'll go ahead and put the wheel back on and look it all over make sure it's all good. Well there she is. Running really good, real smooth. Just took it around the block and it's it's got a little bit more pickup and power already. Um, I let it sit in idle for a little while. Kind of circulate all that stuff I put in the fuel. But uh yeah, it's, it's doing a lot better. As you can hear, it runs real smooth and sounds healthy. Uh, brakes work real good. So this is just, uh, if you will, day one video. One day of work, and uh, if you want to be technical, it's two, because I went to bed and woke up and did more. But it's only about three or four hours worth of work. So it's less than a day's worth of work. And uh, made a huge difference. It's nothing nothing's leaking it's running a whole lot smoother than it was 
Next I get to do is um, the interior needs a really good deep clean and then paint job. The wife's excited for the paint job. I'm not because I got to do it, but you know, it'll look good when it's done. So definitely stay tuned for more. Um, there'll be a, uh, a lucky couple of people getting the SRT4. It has a bow waiting for it to go on top of the roof. We've got a serious buyer. He's going to give me six grand uh, if I save it till January 1st, so in about three weeks, roughly. The SRT4 will be to a new home. Don't worry, I'll get a video of it driving off, put some sad music to it or something. <laughs> but yes, guys, I'm serious. You guys are getting that car. Um, thank you for being not idiot low ballers that are just wasting my time. I really appreciate it. And thanks for everyone watching my videos. There will be a lot better videos coming here shortly. So definitely stay tuned. Let me know what you guys think of the new sedan. I mean, it's a fixer upper, but it's really not that bad of shape. And uh, every day I'm sure it'll get better. So stay tuned everybody, there'll be more.